When we took only the top results last time, we noticed that, hey, if you're willing to scroll past the sponsored first result, Amazon actually provides very clear guidance for what they feel is the best choice with this helpful little badge. But should we trust it? I mean, on the one hand, I'm sure that Mr. Bezos would only mine the finest of data from our purchases and reviews and use that to lead us to the promised land of value PC gaming town. Surely he would never use his powers for capitalistic evil. <laughs> but of course, on the other hand, reality. <laughs> so we built a second all Amazon PC this time using only their overall pick to see if beating back the tidal wave of sponsored crap really is as simple as just trusting Amazon, the guys who sold us out in the first place. Will it be better? Let's find out after this segue. This segue, this segue, this segue to our sponsor. Ugreen, their Uno series of charging accessories may have cute little faces, but that doesn't make them any less feature rich. So add some fun to the boring act of charging your devices. Check them out using our links and save big during their Black Friday sale. My first question was, what exactly is the overall pick badge? Well, based on what we can find, it looks like it was added to their Amazon's choice system back in 2023. And in a nutshell, it takes our herd mentality concept. So the idea of just buying whatever's popular, cause hey, it couldn't be that bad, to a whole new level. To become an overall pick though, an item must not only be purchased often, it also needs a four star rating or greater and must be returned infrequently. That extra bit of data about returns is what makes this such a game changer. Exposing that to shoppers makes sense for everyone, the buyer, the seller, and even Amazon themselves. I mean, nobody likes dealing with returns. So the only question is, did it work? If it did, I should have a high value, high quality, and reliable computer. And you know what? Outside of a few <clears throat> odd choices, this build doesn't look half bad. While most folks probably don't need a motherboard with AMD's premium X670E chipset, the Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI is a pretty nice board. It's got an eight layer PCB, PCI Express Gen 5 on both the X16 and our top M.2 slot, loads of VRM cooling, solid IO, two and a half gig networking. What's not to love? Well, for one thing, apparently this board doesn't like WD or Samsung drives. That's not gonna be a deal breaker for us because, <clears throat> spoiler, Amazon picked a crucial BX500 for our system that we'll talk about later, but we're also gonna try a Samsung NVMe drive just to see how that goes. Before we can do that, we need to get this to a state where we can actually boot it up though, starting with our CPU, the Ryzen 7 7700X for just $245. Now, this was on a deep discount at the time of purchase for a whopping 39% off, but hey, I mean, if that's what makes something an overall pick, I'm into it. It's eight cores, 16 threads, Zen 4, and it'll boost to a max of 5.4 gigahertz, making it pretty hard to beat at this price. So as you'd expect, most of the complaints about it were just about DOA chips or empty boxes, probably due to the shipment being opened and intercepted. Annoying, but hardly AMD's fault. For our DDR5 memory, we ended up with a sweet looking 32 gig kit from Corsair, but under the surface, it runs at 6,400 mega transfers per second CL36. That's not awful, but most folks should be shooting for about 10 nanoseconds of first word latency these days, especially now that prices have come down. If you want a bit more detail about that, stay tuned for our next Memory Speed Matters video. For now though, I'm still feeling pretty good about this choice thanks to the low number of one-star reviews, most of which just seem to be complaining about DOA products. I mean, to be clear, DOA is bad, but Corsair support seems to fall somewhere between adequate and, hey, maybe even good. So if you get unlucky, reach out and they should get you taken care of. Oh, you know who also has good support? LTTstore.com. Check out the new circuitry hoodie. Looks great, feels great, and it's punny as all heck. Circuitry. Now let's talk about our SSD. While there's nothing inherently wrong with using a SATA SSD in 2024, I mean, they're perfectly fine for booting your OS or running games, it does feel like a questionable choice for overall pick when you can get an M.2 NVMe drive for a similar price. For one thing, they're faster, but 
perhaps more importantly, if you don't care about performance, you don't need to mount NVMe drives in your case and then run two flipping cables to them. So when Amazon recommended that we buy the BX500 one terabyte, I was a little surprised. However, we've had good experiences with crucial drives overall, and it's easy to believe that Amazon has too. I mean, heck, I'd probably promote this drive on my store if it had a 4.7 star rating with over 120,000 reviews. I mean, they're not all good, but the one star complaints are mostly about write speeds and RMAs, neither of which uh, should affect us today. For our CPU cooler, I was pleasantly surprised to see the Peerless Assassin 120 SE. I know it's good, you know it's good, but was Amazon gonna know it's good? Apparently yes. And honestly, there's really not that much else to say about this thing. It's a great cooler from a company that's been playing the game just about as long as anyone, and it comes at a great price. Now let's fire it up and see if this Samsung SSD works. Hmm, I guess before we can fire this up, we're probably gonna need a power supply. Amazon suggested the RM850X, which is a little overkill for our build today, but it's a reputable unit and it gives us some headroom if we wanna upgrade our GPU down the line. Also, being 33% off at the time, that doesn't hurt. Now, the keen eyed among you might have noticed something though. We thought we had an RM850X in our stock, so we didn't order one, but it turns out we have the shift version. We could have delayed the shoot, but we thought, you know what? Shift happens and it doesn't make a difference to performance. So time to get some modular cables installed. Power. Hey, there we go. All right, theoretically we should just fire up into windows unless it actually has problems with Samsung drives. Did they say what the compatibility issue is supposed to be? Should just be a motherboard BIOS update. Okay, well, evidently ours is updated, so cool. But we can't leave it like this, so we took Amazon's advice and bought a Corsair 4000D Airflow. At full price, honestly, it's a little on the expensive side, but at about 24% off, it's hard to say no. We've built in this case plenty of times and I like it. It's thoughtfully laid out, easy to work in, and most of the low star reviews had to do with the lack of space around the power supply unit, which uh, we accidentally remedied by going with the uh, um, side mounted modular cables. But you could also remedy by just plugging in your regular modular power supply cables ahead of time, then sliding the whole thing in. And finishing touch, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the GPU and... Wow. Okay, no, I'm, I'm kidding. It's not gonna be an off-brand RX 580 like last time. Instead, we've got something far more modern, an RTX 3060 12 gig. It's neither the latest, nor is it the greatest, but it should do us just fine for high-end 1080p gaming or even 1440p in a pinch, thanks to NVIDIA frame rate boosting features like DLSS. Most of the complaints about this card had to do with them breaking down over time, which can happen and it seems like most of those folks were frustrated that it happened past the return window. So maybe we found a fatal flaw in Amazon's returned infrequently criteria? After all, a card that can't be returned is not necessarily a card that shouldn't be returned. Let's see if ours works. Damn. Hey, there we go. So overall we paid $1,147, which it's not too bad. We've said for years that this is right around the sweet spot of price to performance. And without even firing it up, I can tell you this is going to be a much better machine than what we built last time. However, the question isn't, can we beat last time? The question is, can we beat this? Ploof believes that his hand-picked configuration will outperform Mr. Bezos's tech tips while also being cheaper? By about $20. And I don't believe I know. A bold claim. He is rocking the same 7700X thanks to that sweet deal, but he managed slightly faster memory, a Gen 4 drive with a DRAM cache, and a Radeon 7700 XT. Sure, we downgraded to a motherboard that lacks PCIe Gen 5, and the H5 Flow, it's not as premium a case as the 4000D Airflow, but man, is that ever a lot of GPU. And the big surprise here is that almost all of the deals that we found to build this machine were on Amazon. So if their overall choice was algorithmically adjusted, 
they could have offered us this same config for just $60 more than what we paid. So let's see if he slayed the dragon. Starting with Horizon Zero Dawn. So 1080p, ultimate quality. Ultimate, ultimate quality. Okay. I mean... Oh, hamburgers. I know that we're in different zones. Yeah, but, but still. I, uh, I've i got like over 50 or 60 FPS higher than you. Yeah, this is not close, I don't. Brother. I don't think it's close at all. I've got almost twice the frames. It's not a perfect scientific benchmarking system we're doing here, but uh, I don't think even if I go to the same spot as you, I'm going to suddenly shoot down to like 83 FPS. Let's go to another game. Let's check another game. Hold on. I want to try turning on frame gen. I can use DLSS. Oh. It's still not as good. No, it's really not. Yeah, that actually didn't boost your FPS as much as I thought it would. It's higher, but not by a lot. Do I have... AMD's upscaling method with yes. super resolution. So don't get me wrong. It's not as good. It's not as good. Yeah, it's not I as don't good. even like DLSS because yeah, I can tell when it's on. But now I'm getting almost 200 frames a second. Yeah. Well, okay, it dipped a lot, but I'm 170, 160. Especially in a game with a lot of nature, a lot of trees. Oh, I know. It looks so bad. It looks so bad. It really does not. It, I can't. I can't do it. Even this, you can see. Well, you're a diva. Look at this. You can see the shimmering. I can't do it. Okay. okay. Well, we're at different spots. Okay, that's fine. I've kind of got a bit more going on. I mean, I don't uh, think it's, it Oh my God. Matters. Look at this. 47, 43. My 1% lows are 90. It's amazing what skimping on basically everything but your GPU and then blowing as much money as possible on your GPU will do for your gaming experience at higher resolutions or higher detail levels. Oh yeah. And we didn't even skimp that much. These are all pretty brand name parts I chose, you know. No weird thermal take power supplies or anything like that. Yeah, what power supply do you have? Uh, also Corsair, but I went down 100 watts. I don't think this is any kind of contest. I don't really think we need to run any more games. I think this has been very much settled at this point. Overall then, the system is nowhere near as bad as last time. We were given decent products from reputable brands, sometimes even at a great price. But while the 3060 12 gig is a perfectly cromulent card, if you want to game at 1080p, well, medium, <laughs> depending on the game, we'll have it linked down below along with everything else. It's impossible to avoid the truth that it is getting a little long in the tooth, especially if you consider that 50 series is rumored to be right around the corner. Along with this segue to our sponsor, our sponsor, our sponsor, <laughs> our sponsor, Ugreen. You know what can be a bit boring? Charging your devices. I mean, it's such a mundane task. You plug in your iPhone when it's dead, you sit there and wait for it to get enough juice so you can send a text. Well, Ugreen wants to add a little spice to your life with their Uno series of charging accessories. They have all the Ugreen power delivery and reliability we've grown to love, but the twist is that now every product in this lineup has a TFT smart display that shows your charging status in the form of a cute little emoji. For example, check out their Uno GAN 100 watt charger. It's got three USB-C ports, one USB-A port, and according to Ugreen's tests, it can take an iPhone 16 from 0 to 57% in just 30 minutes. You can also check out their Uno Magnetic 15 watt power bank. It's Qi2 certified with a maximum output of 15 watts, a capacity of 10,000 milliamp hours, and it even has a built-in stand to prop up your device while it's charging. So learn more using our links and save big during their Black Friday sale down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the one where we built a PC using only the top search results. Spoiler, it was pretty much all sponsored products and a lot of them kind of sucked.